Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the brand spanking new touchscreen for the Ender 3, which is the uh, new touchscreen upgrade for the Ender 3. It's very exciting stuff. If you're looking to upgrade your old school printer from touching a knob to touching a screen, this is possibly the best upgrade for you at the moment. It's brand new out into the market. I've just bought one, so I'm gonna show you exactly how to take care of it, and let's see what's in the box. Okay, so this is the brand new touchscreen for, uh, it says here, Ender 3 V2, Ender 3, Ender 3 S, and Ender 3 Pro. It won't work on 8-bit boards. It will not work on 8-bit boards. They've gotta be 32-bit boards. These are retailing at the moment for around about 32 pounds. I certainly think that's what it is on Jank 3D and also on the uh, Creality Zone website. I picked this up for slightly more money because um, I didn't wanna wait. I didn't wanna wait for stuff to be shipped to me. That's all that's in the box. There's nothing. Anyway, let's move swiftly on. So, there's a couple of things you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need to purchase this at £32 or £40, depending on how quickly you want that particular device. And there's a couple of things we're just going to go through on how to flash this particular firmware. So, let's get rid of that box. Let's select an Ender from the stock here. This is a robust Ender 3 that is gathering quite a lot of dust at the moment. It's, um, it's pretty... It's pretty grim actually, but it'll do. So, end of three. First and foremost, we need to find out exactly what we've got motherboard wise inside. So what I'm gonna do is grab hold of this filament and just take it down, turn the printer on its back, and probably to here, just like that. And we're gonna need to find out exactly what we've got inside of this. Uh, I think you can do this in the uh, screen firmware, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna open it up and have a quick look what's inside. Because you're gonna to need to do that anyway in order to plug this very cable in. So without undoing it, you're not gonna be able to access that. So this is probably the best way to do it, I would say. So it's free screws, very, very simple stuff. And this will be the same for the uh, the Pro or the uh, standard Ender 3 and also for the V2. The V2s, I believe, are all 32 bits boards anyway. So. You're not going to have to have too many concerns about that. So it's three screws on the back, and there's a little fiddly screw at the, uh, the top of this one as well. And we'll just ping that off. Let's have a look what we've got inside. So this board is the 4.2.2. And if you trundle over to the Creality 3D official website, I'll put a link in the description for these. So what we're going to be looking at here is downloading the 4.2.2 software. Um, if you've got a different board, if it's a 4.2.7, and download that one instead. It's all good. Let's have a look where we can download this from. Can't believe it's it's trying to give me Google access. That sucks. That really sucks. Well, folks, if that doesn't work, you can head over to the 3D Jake website. I'll put the link in the description for that. All links will be in the description. Don't worry about it. Uh, all you need to do is download this particular file, open it up, select the one for the board that you require and make sure all you need to do is copy that .bin file to the SD card. If you use a clean card, freshly formatted SD card, uh, all you should need to do is plug it into the front of your machine in order to wake this up and make this work. So copy it straight across, easy peasy. So what we're gonna need to do first and foremost is disconnect the current screen. Obviously do this with the power off. In order to do that, you'll find that this little cable here is just plugged in, unplug that, Root it back through, make sure you're not pulling out any of the other cables while you're doing that. Easier said than done, here we go. Pull that sucker out. Okay, and the next thing we're gonna to need to do is just take the screen off as well. So I'll quickly detach the old ender screen from here. One, and two. So there's the old screen. Don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. There's the old screen there. Just gonna pop that down on there. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is grabbing the new screen and it does come with a packet of screws which is just here. So next what we're going to do is just replace that cable very simply and then we're going to run that through to where the screen is going to go and the screen of course is going to attach on the side like this. What we're going to do is use the extrusion here as our leverage just to slide this in. Before we're going to use this, I'm going to utilise this on the inside here. So all we need to do is just run that down. 
just like that. All we need to do now, we remember the, the number is uh, version 4.2.2. And we're going to spin this round. Basically pop everything back together again. So that's these three screws and then obviously the one on the back. And just be sure as well that the cable isn't going to be catching on uh, any of the uh, the lead screws or anything on just on below here. Just make sure that that's off and out of the way. And then we have the one for the top, which basically just plugs straight in. Just like that. So at the moment, we can. this isn't doing anything because obviously the firmware has not been, uh, been loaded in. So what we're going to do is switch that off. The firmware is going to be loaded via the SD slot, which is just in the front here. So all I'll do now, it looks like it's fully loaded. So I'll unplug this now, take this out, switch it back off again. Then I'll switch him back on again. Woo! Look at that. So obviously we're back in the setup mode here. This is very, very similar to the uh, the V2, but obviously you're not twisting the knob, you're just pushing the button. Uh, in here, of course, you've got print files, uh, if you had prints on the card, of course. Then in addition to that, you've got this ready, and there's move access, there's uh, feed and return, motor release, preheat, uh, PLA, ABS, one-click cooling. Sounds awesome. And we've got setup, we've got languages, restore, uh, about, and we've got 220 by 220 by 250 version uh, 2.0.1.4. Creality.com, you've got your temperature and everything and your Z-hop and everything at the bottom here, which looks great. And we've got uh, leveling. Obviously, I don't have a BL Touch installed on this because it's a tiny little printer. Why do I need to install that? I can just twiddle around with my hands. It's all good. But uh, there you go. So let's see if uh, this thing homes. Move access. And let's see if we can home it. There's a lot of fluff on this printer. I should really clean these. I won't. Okay, so we're just going to home this one. And again, this printer is filthy. It probably is uh, long overdue of uh, having a bit of a clean. But uh, hey, we're always printing. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you upgrade the touchscreen. It's going to be very similar across the board. Don't be too concerned about getting your hands in there and pulling bits and pieces out. It's all relatively simple. Everything is labeled on here. So there are two major things you need to make sure of. Number one, that you've got the right motherboard. And number two, that you've got the right firmware that's going into the card. If it does display the wrong one, then obviously keep searching around for it. But the links are in the description. And if you read through the description, you'll see that I'll give links for the V2 and for the Pro and for this normal Ender as well. Um, in fact, I think this is the Pro. This is the Pro. So there you go. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a little like if this has helped you. If you've got any comments at all, please leave them in the description below and I will endeavour to contact you as soon as I possibly can. We will see you next time. Bye for now.